Okay. Good morning, everyone. So today again we are uh, meeting for the next class. Uh, yesterday we have done uh, you know uh, different kinds of forest applications using different kinds of geospatial tools. Now uh, with the help of you know uh, these tools, how we can go for the uh, forest resource information uh, system making of that and then how we can go for the forest management information system okay so let's discuss one by one so here we will be uh, you know studying different parameters which are uh, you know taken into consideration for the forest research information system and then we are also going to study uh, the you know uh, the application which are there uh, in you know different habitat suitability mapping with their parameters so with the help of different case studies we will be uh, you know seeing these kind of things so let's discuss what is forest resource information system so uh, when we are talking about the forest resource information system then it is a system where uh, you know we are trying to incorporate different data sets which are related to uh, the you know various parameters of forest layers like uh, yes like the uh, you know different kinds of uh, uh, forest layers which are uh, helpful in different uh, uh, you know planning implementation and monitoring of different forest objectives so the forest resource information system is envisaged as an integrated system which will be used to support any kind of planning implementations of different layers and monitoring of uh, you know different objectives which are related to different kinds of forest management related activities so for this resource information system basically it uh, you know um, uh, focuses on the uh, integrated uh, approach where uh, uh, we used to have uh, a sort of uh, you know um, uh, tool where uh, the plannings, implementations of those plannings and, uh, you know, different kinds of uh, monitoring which are based on different objectives which are actually related to the different, uh, uh, you know, management related activities is considered. The forest management information system, which is also called as FMIS, can be used for the static, uh, strategic, tactical, and operational planning and implementations and yes of course the control in and across the administrative units of the uh, different uh, levels of organizational hierarchies okay so this forest information system basically it has uh, you know different kinds of uh, uh, strategic planning under it tactical planning under it and different kinds of operational plannings which are helpful in uh, you know different uh, administrative levels uh, at different uh, you know hierarchical structures of their uh, ranking okay so uh, as as we know that we have different hierarchical structures starting from a forest guard to pccf level and on the other hand uh, if you see uh, in case of um, different ministries especially moef which is basically uh, deals with this forest resources uh, so uh, there also we have uh, different ministers different uh, uh, you know uh, level of uh, uh, you know uh, politicians who are also into the uh, you know um, levels where we need to go for different legal and uh, planning uh, for different management activities related to the development of these forest resources so these kind of systems they help in those kind of activities beside the database and the models required to support the decision making in many programs of the department 
then the uh, uh, the forest resource information system also has the ability to maintain the current forest inventories and generate the maps which are spatially oriented data okay so based on different layers or based on um, uh, the different parameters this forest resource information system it also helps us in you know updating and managing different inventories related to the uh, forest and also generating the spatial distributed maps of those uh, you know inventories which are related to the forest working plan maps forest inf infrastructure mapping forest vegetation related inventories that what is the density and uh, uh, what are the different species in that particular uh, you know forested area and then yes of course the topographical features and finally the customization based on the requirement now for example uh, for some planning we need to know about the species only in some planning we need to about the biomass only in some plannings we need to uh, know about the density of the forests so as per the need of a particular department we can go for the customization of the data also if we have a proper forest resource information system then uh, while we are creating this kind of forest information system now we have taken a case study of uh, jnk where you know different uh, uh, mappings has been done for the complete jnk where we have uh, the demarcations of uh, at different division level then followed by the ranges followed by the compartments and for each compartment we have the vegetation map done aspect slope in case of this case study which we have taken up then images of the complete uh, uh, you know forest divisions then the digital elevation models and then uh, the other topographical and other parameters which are helpful in different kinds of forest planning then uh, this is the ranges demarcation you can see here different different forest ranges are being demarcated or shown uh, in case of this the divisions were shown is you can see here these are demarcating the different uh, forest division marwa kishtwar okay badarwa okay and then in this case under divisions we have the demarcation of different ranges now in this you can see the in each uh, division followed by uh, ranges you have the demarcation of the different compartment as per the codings available in the forest department that is also being done so these kind of uh, you know activities at the initial level uh, one has to do while we are uh, uh, talking about the forest information system okay so now we we can have uh, the individual compartment wise uh, you know information we can if we like in 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 our uh, uh, initial study when while we were talking about this forest uh, resource information system we have uh, stated that it also helps in the customization based re uh, requirement so if suppose somebody needs only a compartment which is maybe 0 0 um three six compartment they need so we 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 will see which which one um, you know uh, uh, this compartment is 0036 and then we can um, uh, clip it and we can have complete information about the forest type land use slope aspect elevation about this particular compartment if somebody suppose wants that i want uh, a complete uh forest uh, uh, range of uh, this quasi gond so uh, then uh, they can uh, extract the information so uh, under this range all the compartments can be derived okay so if we want a, a information for complete kishtwar uh, forest division then that also can be so as per the requirement we can go uh, for the extraction of data sets based on somebody's requirements
okay so for the first level we need to go for the demarcation of different uh, administrative boundaries under uh, the forest administration then uh, we can also have the land use land cover map uh, for the complete state uh, in case of uh, you know construction of any forest management system in uh, a block level or in a range level or in a division level so complete information about the land use land cover has to be uh, plot plotted over that particular area and then suppose uh, from that you want only a compartment that can be extracted out uh, for the uh, area which you ever you need out of that forest division so after that the information system it also helps us for example i want for uh, you know this range which is uh, shown in uh, you know cyan color so i have selected for this range i have clicked on this polygon and then i will have the complete information like this okay you can see its shape is like polygon then uh, this is the complete spatial information of the uh, particular compartment of this okay so uh, from here this uh, uh, you know drop down i can select for compartment if i will click for uh, compartments here all the compartment boundary will be highlighted if i will click for the range the range will appear so whatever the need i will select that and i will be getting the complete information about that then this is the overlay of the compartment over the satellite image okay so each and every uh, compartment is being plotted over here now whatever uh, you know thing you want to highlight you have to uh, click that so right now because image is highlighted and the uh, dam and uh, white uh, hill shade they are below this so if I, i will uncheck it then i can able to see all those things now this is all the compartment they are uh, you know overlaid with the uh, compartments file and then we can have each and every compartments idea about their you know um, elevation okay then this is uh, with the slope we have overlaid all the compartments now uh, for each and every uh, compartment we can have an idea about the slope also okay so we based on uh, you know these uh, activities we can have rough idea about a particular slope that uh, uh, a particular compartment that what kind of forest suppose i'm clicking on this so this may have very degraded sort of uh, forest but if you see here in this so here we have dense sort of forest okay so uh, based on uh, this uh, elevation or dam i can see that these are the areas which are having very uh, you know plain sort of uh, the, uh, slope and wherever the green or sky blue or these kind of colors are there they are denoting the high elevated areas so we can have an idea about uh, the uh, you know distribution of forest or rough idea about the things then about the aspect also we can have an idea about um, the humidity content the moisture content as the south uh, is the you know uh, slope which is having the uh, you know the direct rays of the sun on that direction so we can have an idea that in southern parts we have uh, uh, more dry types of uh, forest or there are more chances or of uh, forest fires so these kind of analysis we can see based on this then slope also in higher slopes there will be 
you know challenge to uh, get into because due to high slopes there may be uh, chances of inaccessibilities of different things okay so after that we can also have a uh, infrastructure develop uh, you know demarcation of the different uh, wildlife different nature parks different national parks okay all those kind of things can be plotted over the uh, the you know different compartments or different ranges or different divisions okay so uh, here we have tried to uh, tell about the uh, different uh, you know uh, administrative uh, areas okay in particularly uh, dachigem uh, national park okay so these are the different uh, areas where we have the um, administrations set up are there maybe they are the headquarters of different ranges or different uh, compartments are being set up here okay so different uh, administrative uh, boundaries or administrative uh, uh, officers they are sitting in different parts of here okay that now these uh, administrations they include the forest rest house enclosures of an, uh, animals then forest check posts then forest bridges then the forest timbers depots then the forest nurseries okay so uh, while i will be you know clicking or selecting this this particular point i will be getting information about this point so uh, what this so i have we have matlab through this case study we have also tried to uh, have an information about the infrastructures in the dachi gam uh, national park of jain okay then the multiple layers they are being plotted over this so we have opened the different vegetation layer uh, along with the hill shade in that particular area along with the drainage network so we can have an idea about the uh, you know drain various drainage orders various uh, you know uh, vegetation types in different forest uh, divisions of the area so we can have the overlay of different multiple layers then this is a vegetation ma a map where uh, the types of forest in particularly this dachigam national park were demarcated okay so these are the major types uh, the authors they have tried to uh, demarcate and then this is a vegetation of dachigam uh, this park this is a uh, calorific values of the vegetation okay so they are very high in case of uh, this fir and kal forest okay and this is the values so th this map is showing different values of uh, you know vegetation and then this is a slope map of the area okay this is a elevation this is uh, the uh, you know slope map this is aspect map of the area okay and then this is a proximity analysis of different uh, you know infrastructures that uh, uh, you know uh, different points what proximity of their existence from a particular distance then this is a road proximity analysis okay this is fire vulnerability map of uh, this dachigam park which we have calculated using these many parameters slope aspect elevation if you go through your forest fire risk of forest fire paper then uh, we have taken all these parameters as a input of forest fire as they play an important role uh for any kind of fire uh existence or the fire risk so this is a risk in the case study they have calculated and this risk can be categorized in four classes where 
the dark maroon color it is showing the high risk and the green color it is showing the lowest risk this is a aerial st st statistics of so total area is 164 square kilometer in case of this dachi then uh, national park and out of that uh, around uh, you know uh, 70 percent area of the total area is under very high to high risk and rest area is medium to low okay so that's why it is very important to take care in case of uh, you know uh, fire season to take care and so different uh, kind of plannings can be done into these areas okay in these high risk prone areas in these uh, very high risk prone areas and moderate also okay so uh, here uh, the you know based on this case study they have also uh, tried to uh, you know overlay the different incidents of forest fire from 2001 to 2016 which are based on the modest fire data for the uh, you know this particularly uh, particular area where uh, you know uh, the fire has been occurred in uh, these many years so from modest data uh, that data has been extracted and uh, they have been plotted over the areas of different intensities so if you see uh, this blue dots they are under uh, very high risk prone areas okay if you see uh, this black dots they are the fire incidents which are in the high risk prone areas and the yellow ones uh, they are in the um, uh, high risk prone areas so uh, through these colors of you know um, points we can identify that blue colors points wherever they are falling they are into high risk prone very high risk prone areas zone so these locations since they have already reported uh, the you know uh, fire incidents so if you, uh, we are getting this as a high risk prone area so we we can see that maximum fire cases has been occurred but you see here there are no recorded cases of fire so uh, it doesn't mean that we can ignore that areas okay so we need to go for the planning because uh, you don't know uh, key, uh, if you have stopped you know taking care of these areas so uh, if there will be a fire so there will be very high intensity of fires because uh, their um, you know accessibility their forest type they are supporting with the very high risk prone areas so we need to be careful in these areas also so uh, we can identify that in these areas there are yes of course many cases of fires okay so you can also quantify your data uh, or your maps based on these kind of activities and you can quantify your study based on the incidents which took place in the previous eras now this is the fire locations from 2005 to 16 okay so you see uh, these fire incidents were controlled as compared to the incidents in the previous map okay so these are the different applications of these uh, forest information systems so if we have the uh, you know mapping done as per the hierarchy of fire risk and the incidents plotted over uh, there uh, wherever the fire incidents have been uh, took place so we can quantify and we can go for the further planning for controlling the fires into those areas clear then we have gis and uh, uh, remote sensing for wildlife so uh, when we are talking about the remote sensing in gis for uh, wildlife uh, we have uh, you know uh, first 
thing which we can perform the monitoring of vegetation status of national parks and sanctuaries uh, 100 national parks and 500 wildlife sanctuaries which consist of 5% of protected land okay so we first thing which we can plan with the help of gis and remote sensing in case of wildlife vegetation status which is again required for the other activities into the forest activities also then we can go for the wildlife habitat mapping we can go for the eco sensitive zonations we can go for the wildlife census we can also plan for the habitat suitability index because in nowadays in many uh, uh, you know studies you will be finding that uh, there is a human or uh, habitat conflict related cases are coming up because of the encroachment of human um, into the habitat areas of different uh, species so uh we we can go for the suitability index and we can on the same hand we are also finding that um uh, the uh, you know uh, uh, various species they are becoming endangered species because of a continuous loss of those um, you know species in two different forested areas so we need to take care of those uh, uh, you know uh, wildlife Uh, so that they can be protect and uh, we can also uh, plan for their suitability habitat suitability mapping in case we have to um, uh, you know go for any kind of uh, land use change as far as the forest is concerned then carrying capacity analysis then remote sensing in national park and wildlife uh, sanctuary it also helps in different kinds of management prep plan uh preparations for different wildlife and national parks and finally the monitoring of corridors for the wildlife mag uh, migration okay so uh, these are the different activities which we can plan with the help of uh, remote sensing and gis in better way okay in which the monitoring of vegetation status is main wildlife habitat mapping is again then eco sensitive zonation mapping uh the monitoring of different corridors of uh, wildlife migrations uh their uh, you know management plan preparations carrying capacity analysis and habitat suitability uh, mapping okay so then we can also go for the eco sensitive zonations how we can go for that uh we can uh, you know uh, map different uh, uh, you know wildlife sanctuaries national parks and etc now uh through this case studies uh this eco sensitive areas and their boundaries have been demarcated okay so uh, these are the different eco sensitive areas uh, mapping has been done and they has been uh, categorized in eco sensitive area 1 and 2 okay then uh, a 3 km you know buffer zonation has been uh, created to uh, calculate uh, the uh, sensitivity in and around these eco sensitive zones okay so 3 km buffer zonation has been uh, performed on the basis of multiple buffers okay then uh, for each buffer uh, you know uh, has been created uh, around 0.5 km buffer zone in and around of uh, this dachigem national park okay then the land use land cover class was plotted or extracted for each and every buffer and then the different land use land cover classes were calculated for each buffer okay you see here for this buffer uh, the first buffer the different land use land cover classes are found which includes the pasture land the close forest the dense scrub the open forest uh, open scrub stony waste water bodies and the dachigem national park boundary along with that
then uh, in the study uh, the land use land cover was calculated for a 0.5 meter buff a kilometer buffer of in and around the park okay so this is the area statistics of that uh, you know uh, uh, park uh, and this is uh, the most sensitive area the uh, far the buffer the sensitivity will be decreasing so these are the different alpine uh, uh, land use land cover uh, of that 0.5 kilometer buffer where in the total buffer 27% area falls under the open forest and 31% area which is maximum uh, falls under the alpine pastures then barren land only 0% so these are the different uh, land use land cover in uh, you know this buffer then the wildlife habitat mapping can also be done uh, for that this methodology in the case study has been followed where the satellite data so survey of india topological sheets and the dem data of 30 meter resolution of ester uh, has been used uh, from satellite data the vegetation map was derived survey of india sheets were used for the road and drainage map creation and from uh, ester data we have tried to extract the information with uh, topographical information uh, having the slope elevation and aspect then uh, by clubbing all these data the co correlation uh, was uh, you know uh, calculated uh, based on the photo uh, uh, phytos uh, uh, phytogenic studies of trees and shrubs uh, and herbs where the sample plot has been taken uh, for different sizes and then correlation of that has been done on the basis of the feeding sites bedding sites seating sites uh, urinary sites browsing sites has been taken then the interpolation of these things has been done and based on that we have calculated the habitat use map okay then uh, after this uh, the fcc was used for the uh, you know um, demarcation of this uh, boundary of the park and then uh, this is uh, the park okay and the different uh, 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 you know different uh, drainage networks in the park different uh, um, roads different uh, uh, you know uh, tracking roads of the park has been demarcated then this is a road map where we uh, the in the case studies metal and metal tracking packs of a and b category has been categorized then the vegetation maps the complete vegetation was uh, calculated where the settlement uh, agriculture different types of forest water bodies uh, snow areas uh, has been demarcated then this is the points depicting the whole hangul sign uh, points in the dachingam uh, national park uh, the where the summer signs of the point and the winter size of the uh uh hangul or sign points has been demarcated so red they are uh, showing the uh, you know uh, signs in the summer season and the green one they are showing the uh this thing uh, signs in the winter season so you can see uh, in half or maybe 70% they falls under uh, so e, uh, in the Uh, you know half of the image and then uh, on the uh, left hand side you will find that in some uh, winters they have their uh, you know um, uh, existence okay then this is a elevation map of the uh, dachingam national park okay so uh, the data uh, of their point existence has been plotted over this so you can see uh that around uh in 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 summers 
their uh, existence is between 28 to 4400 meters of elevation but in winters their existence the signs they exist in uh, you know 1500 to uh, you can say 2500 meters in the winters okay so while there is a summer they these these uh, uh, you know hangus they 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 this, the signs of their existence they can be in uh, uh, higher elevation areas in winters they 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 their signs you will find in the um, uh, lower elevated areas of the chingam national park uh, now this is aspect again um in the uh, you know uh, winters they have uh, their existence in uh, you know a particular direction where you will find east okay southeast south and southwest so this these are the uh, you know sides uh, of sun facing whereas in north okay in north west uh in northeast uh and in uh, west they will be uh, in uh, you know summer seasons as they are the uh, you know shady areas as far as the aspects are concerned so after this this is a slope map uh, where we have a distribution uh, of mixed kind of things in lower slopes they have more existence uh, during uh, you know um, during summers and in uh, winters mostly they are on the little bit higher slopey areas but generally you will find in uh, the uh, you know uh, normal slopey areas they will be found in then in winter habitat uh, uh, this is the boundary and the high and low uh, suitability index if you see so uh, in winters they would prefer to stay in these areas uh, and in summers into the right hand side areas okay which is based on the different factors or parameters which we have taken into consideration which includes the slope aspect elevation land use land cover etc okay so my aim is to show you this kind of studies that you can also opt for your uh, you know dissertations and uh, the thesis formation these kind of problems into different areas this is a statistics uh as per the uh, you know uh, habitats in winter and summer as per their uh, vegetation classification in summers and winters okay so these kind of analysis you can also uh, go for with the help of different uh, gis tools techniques and overlaying of different layers so these are the favorable land use land covers for uh, hangul in kashmir valley these are the favorable uh, sites as per the elevations are concerned for um, this uh, hangul in kashmir valley and these are the so these kind of studies we can also opt for the uh, different areas of uh, maybe uh, jnk himachal northeast etc or some other areas so mainly you need to focus on the parameters on the techniques how they are being uh, useful for these kind of uh, habitat suitability maps now uh, the settlements and roads as bottleneck in hangul uh, habitats not only in uh, hangul habitat but in any kind of uh, you know habitats these uh, settlements and roads they uh, act like a bottleneck okay so you see uh, here the encroachment of these settlements are uh, coming day by day into these forested areas and uh, because of this maybe they are directly or indirectly becoming an hindrance um, uh, for the 
habitat uh, or for the uh, you know uh, generation uh, or the breeding or uh, the uh, wildlife uh, you know um, what you can call wildlife uh, uh, is being you know uh, targeted in terms of their uh, existence and all those kind of things so we need to take care that their uh, habitats or corridors they are not being uh, disturbed by these kind of activities uh, into those forested areas then potential hangul corridor in kashmir valleys now uh, these are the uh, you know uh, here we are trying to tell out the different uh, uh, sites which are which are having the potential for the corridors okay so uh, these kind of kind of studies uh, you can also opt for your studies okay so these are the uh, different uh, elevations and uh, the existence of these different kinds of uh, uh, points okay so these kind of studies can also be opt for uh, different uh, uh, habitat suitability and different kinds of mapping here you can see um, uh, different habitats different uh, hangul sign points and their existing um, protected areas and then the gauss boundaries are being plotted over the satellite image of uh, the dachingam national park okay so these are the different habitations okay which are there existing in the uh, park and this is uh, the uh, hangul sign points okay so we we can we have to protect these areas from different kinds of uh, you know uh, uh, you know conflicts of human and uh, different wildlife so there are different stages on which uh, you know uh, different kinds of uh, studies uh, related to their uh, uh, you know wildlife potential zone mapping is being studied and then here in first stage you can see uh, that different kinds of literature sources has been taken into consideration regarding uh, the images regarding the suitable dam precipitation data soil mapping literature sources related to the precipitation data climatic data watershed analysis as all these things are important for any kind of uh, you know uh, zonations then uh, based on these data sets land use digital elevation models rainfall erosion uh, soil erosion threshold uh, you know flow accumulation and then the precipitation uh, reference uh, evaporation dam soil groups land use land cover classification uh, boundaries of kashmir valleys climatic zones climatic zone tables and other biological tables or biophysical parameters has been taken into consideration and based on these parameters uh, Uh, in the case study the seasonal water yield model was created and the sediment delivery of the model has been uh, created and based on that the so uh, again this in stage 4 uh, the socio economic data was also incorporated with this and finally as a result the sedimentation retention service or uh, provision from the household uh, these kind of studies has been done then the sediment retention service provision from the presence of reservoir around seam dry season based flow service provision flood reduction service provision these kind of things has been calculated for annual soil loss this is the uh, uh, you know formula the russell equation has been followed uh, now this is the elevation map of the uh, kashmir valley uh, where the jhelum basin was taken into consideration now these are the different sub basins so this kind of studies can also be opted for the 
calculation of different kinds of analysis. So this is the mean annual precipitation map where you can see from 2081 uh, millimeter, sorry, 281 millimeter to th 1346 millimeter rainfall was observed in this Kashmir Valley. Okay, so due to rainfall, uh, the erosionivity index has been calculated where, uh, you know, MGM uh, hectare, uh, this, this has been calculated. Now you can see this is uh, maximum in the areas uh, where you have red color and minimum in these areas. Okay, so then we have uh, the, land, uh, the soil texture map in the Kashmir Valley. So this is the different types of soil in Jhelum Basin. Soil erosion ability map also has been calculated. So the soil erosion has been found as red color maximum and the minimum as sky blue color. Then land use land cover map of Kashmir Valley calculated. Then sediment export map of Kashmir Valley has been calculated. Sediment export map also has been calculated, sediment re retention map. So all these maps which shows the different kinds of erosion related to the sediment, related to the water uh, uh, retention, re related to the other losses has been calculated based on the base maps of those. Okay, so these kind of studies can be initiated for any kind of forested areas. Uh, I have shown you a, uh, a detailed case study of Kashmir Valley uh, taken up by uh, the few, uh, you know, departments of the uh, uh, JNK government. And uh, uh, this, uh, the uh, you know, uh, the theme or the aim to tell you about this is to uh, make you aware that what kind of uh, you know studies has been taken up by the different departments for the uh, different kinds of forest studies okay so i hope i have uh, justified my topic uh, by telling you these case studies and uh, i i hope you will be uh, you know, performing uh, uh, these kind of methods or these kind of uh, techniques in your studies with more enhanced way for uh, different areas of the country so that uh, your studies can be implemented uh, to, uh, you know, um, uh, go for the conservation of these forested areas along with the various applications like wildlife uh, habitat, um, suitability mapping, or uh, forest fire risk mapping, so that the damage to different forest species, uh, different forest resources can be managed. So with this, I'm, I'll be ending my today's talk. And uh, you all can appear for your quiz through your LMS. Thank you very much. <laughs>